We've all heard of this game, Tug of War. Two groups of people pull a rope on both sides. Now, the group which pulls the rope to their side is the winner. But in order for the group to win, it has to overcome the force on the opponent's side. This means that the rope is experiencing two forces, acting in opposite directions. But eventually, the rope will move in one direction. Now, the force by which the rope will move in this single direction, in spite of the two forces acting on it, is what we are calling the resultant force. In other words, it is the single force resulting from the two forces acting on the rope in opposite directions. The resultant force is the single force associated with the torque obtained by combining a system of forces and torques. Or simply put, this is the single force that is resulting from two or more forces working together. You have this body right here and it's having so many forces acting on it in one direction. Now the resultant force is the single force that is acting as a result of all these. So it means that with this one, if I'm to draw that table again, the single force acting in this direction as a result of all these forces is going to be 4 plus 3, that is 7 plus 2, 9 newtons. So this becomes the resultant force of the forces acting. Likewise here, we are having this force, we have 2 neutrons acting in that direction, 3 newtons acting in the opposite direction. So the single force that is acting on this body, of course the force that is going to overpower is the 3 newton force in that direction. So it means it's going, to be, it's going to be 3 minus 2. 3 newtons is the bigger force, it is 3 minus the 2 newtons. So you end up with 1 newton. So it means the resultant force acting on this body is going to be 1 newton. And it is acting in that direction, in the 3 newton force direction. This is how we get resultant forces of bodies that are acting parallel to each other. Here we were looking at this body and these forces are acting in the same direction. So it's going to simply be 9 newtons. Then right here, still, there are forces, they're acting in this, on the same plane. Some pulling in that direction, some in that direction. If we are having two people here playing tug of war and one, one person is pulling this side with a force of 3 newtons, the other one is pulling that side with a force of 2 newtons, of course, this one with 3 newton force is bigger. So this person is going to overpower. But when he's to overpower, he's supposed to first overcome this force. For him to overpower, to move in that direction. So to overpower this force, it means, he's, overpowering it means it's going to be the, his 3 newtons minus the 2. So he remains with 1. So it means that he's going to pull this block in that direction by a magnitude of... 1 newton and that is the resultant force that is acting on this block. Sometimes the forces may not be like before. They may be per perpen uh, perpendicular. For example here we are having the 4 newton force acting in that direction. We have the 3 newton force acting in, in the direction up. So it means these, these forces are meeting at 90 degrees. They are perpendicular to each other. So now how do we find the resultant force of the, acting on this body? We are going to use Pythagoras theorem. So it means that here, when we are surfaced with a circumstance like this, the resultant force squared is going to be equal to this squared plus that squared. So it's going to be 4 squared plus 3 squared. So the resultant force squared is going to be 4 squared which is 16 plus 3 squared, which is, so r squared is going to be 25 when we find square root on both sides. We find that our resultant force is 5 newtons. That is, that is how we get the resultant force for the forces that are perpendicular. Let's try out this number. For the resultant forces acting on this, we have that we still have forces acting parallel to each other in opposite directions, then we have only this force acting in the perpendicular direction. So what we do here, we first resolve forces acting along this plane. So the forces acting along this plane, we have the 5 newton force acting in that direction, we have the 2 newton force acting in this direction. So to, so to find the resultant force here is going to be 5 newtons minus 2 newtons, giving us 3 newtons. So it means our diagram is going to become like this. 
since it's three newtons and this three newtons is acting in that direction so we're having three newtons in that direction then we are having the four newton force acting up there so now that we have reduced our system of forces to three newtons in that direction and four newtons up then we go ahead and find the resultant force the resultant force therefore is going to become just like before our resultant squared is going to be equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared definitely that's going to give us 25 r squared and our resultant force definitely there is going to become 5 newtons like before